everybody, Jeremy Blum here, back with another episode of Tech Bits. Um, first off, I'd like to thank all you guys. I reached 500 subscribers this week on YouTube. I'm very excited about that. Uh, and I also became a YouTube partner. So I want to thank you guys for helping to make that possible. Uh, you really did make a huge difference. Um, and I appreciate your continued support and suggestions and, and continuing to watch the videos, and I'll keep making them. Um, second, uh, ultimatecomputers.net started a, um, a folding at home team a little while ago. Our team number is uh, 150164. So if you're interested in um, folding at home or if you're doing it already and you want to join the team, that would be great. Um, basically what folding at home is is you're folding proteins on your home computer using your spare processing power um, and then sending them back to Stanford University where they're analyzing them um, and using them to try to find cures for cancer and Alzheimer's and, and all that kind of stuff. It's a really great cause. I'm actually running the, um, the GPU folding client right now on my computer. Alright, so um, on to computer cooling. First of all, I'll talk about system cooling. So this is, these are things that make cool your entire computer enclosure, everything. Um, first off is air cooling. Basically in air cooling, you just have fans mounting the case, pulling in cool air and then exhausting hot air. Um, th there's two ways to do it. You can either have positive or negative air pressure. Um, positive air pressure, you have more air being pulled in than pushed out. And negative air pressure, more air being um, pushed out than pulled in. Both ways work well. It completely depends on your case. Um, some people say one's better than the other. I don't really think that one's better than the other. I think it's more the case that um, you have to test it out in your particular computer and see which works out best for you. So, you know, flip the fans around, um, see which works best out, works out best for you. Um, next, time, next kind of full system cooling is submersion cooling. So basically that's just dunking the entire computer in a non-conductive liquid. Um, in one of the videos I've posted, uh, uh, building a mineral oil cooled computer. We did exactly that. Um, you basically cover the entire computer in mineral oil, which is non-conductive. Uh, it provides a huge amount of space for the heat to dissipate over. And then you can send that through, um, through a pump and a radiator to remove heat from it. All right, so um, on to spot cooling. Spot cooling, there's a couple of different ways to do it, some common methods and some more extreme methods. Um, I'll talk about the common methods first. Um, first of all, there's passive cooling, which is just the heat sink. Um, you most commonly see this on your chipset, um, on voltage regulators, um, sometimes on, 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 often on RAM. Basically, heat sink, the purpose of heat sink is just to increase the surface area of the area that's trying to be cooled. So if you just have a flat chip, there's going to be a lot less surface area in that flat chip than a heat sink with a, like 100 fins sticking up. So by adding those fins on that heat sink, you're uh, providing a lot more surface area for heat to be removed um, from whatever chip you're trying to cool. Next method is um, heat pipes. Heat pipes are really cool. Um, basically, they work on the theory that um, that liquid moves heat a lot better than solid metal does. So in t instead of using um, heat sinks, they're often, they're often used in conjunction with heat sinks. Basically, how they work is you have um, a pipe filled with liquid, and that liquid evaporates when it gets heated. So when it gets near the chip, um, the liquid in that pipe evaporates, turns into a gas, goes back up to the top of the pipe, where it condenses again into a liquid after being cooled by some fan or something like that. And then goes back down the pipe and um, hits that chip again where it condenses, or where, where it evaporates, sorry, and continues that process uh, actively cooling the chip. Next method is uh, active cooling. That's basically just when you have a fan mounted on top of your heat sink and or heat pipes. Um, Basically, you've probably seen this. This is all like stock CPU heat sinks. This is the standard method of cooling. Um, in addition to this heat sink, you now have the fan actively pushing the heat away from the heat sink, which uh, helps cool the component a little bit better. Then you have um, water cooling. Water cooling is uh, starting to become a little more common. It's, um, however, it's still used a lot less than, than uh, active air cooling. But basically, with water cooling, you have um, standard heat Instead of standard heat sinks, they're replaced by uh, hollow heat sinks that liquid can flow through. So you have this, uh, this loop of liquid in your computer, and the liquid flows through all the heat sinks and carries the heat away with it as it goes through those heat sinks. Liquid conducts uh, heat a lot better than air does. And then on top of the case, you're, or anywhere on the case really, you have um, a pump and a radiator that take the heat off of that liquid and uh, remove it from the case, usually using uh, fans and uh, that cools the liquid and it goes through the loop again and keeps pulling off heat. So onto some more extreme methods. Um, Peltier cooling. Peltier cooling is you're basically making a heat pump, so it's an active heat pump, which means that you can go below ambient temperature. You can't do that with, um, with water cooling or air cooling. So let's say the temperature in your room is 70, 70 degrees Fahrenheit, you can get down to way well below that. 
Um, the way it works is you have a number of thermocouples stacked on top of each other, and when you send a voltage through those, it results in a temperature difference. And that's actively uh, pumping heat away. Uh, it can be used to pump heat. Next is a phase change cooling. Phase change cooling is pretty new. Uh, it's very expensive, but it works extremely well. It's very cool. Um, it works actually similar to, heat, to the way heat pipes work. Uh, you have a gas that gets compressed into a liquid, into some kind of external unit sitting outside of your computer, similar to how you might have a water cooling unit outside of your computer. And uh, the li this liquid is pumped to the CPU and where it expands again from the heat. The heat causes it to expand back into a gas, sucking up all the heat from the CPU with it. As it expands, uh, it turns back into a gas and then it goes back down to uh, wherever this external unit is where it's cooled again, turns, condenses back into a liquid, and then goes through the whole loop over and over again. And this helps cool the CPU actively. This can also get well below ambient temperature, often into the negative Celsius range. Um, liquid nitrogen cooling is really extreme. This is basically just used for overclocking and record attempts, that kind of thing. But the way uh, liquid nitrogen cooling works is you have an insulated pipe that you put on top of your CPU or your video card, uh, your GPU, whatever you're cooling. and um, you pour liquid nitrogen down this tube and similar to how uh, phase change cooling works is as liquid nitrogen gets poured down it hits the heat from the CPU, the heat from the CPU causes it to evaporate back into gaseous nitrogen where it just comes out the top of the tube carrying the heat with it. Um, when liquid nitrogen turns into a gas though it does so at around negative 200 degrees Celsius so you're able to get your CPU extremely cool with this method but because this uh, liquid nitrogen is so cold um, you have to worry about uh, water vapor on the out in the surrounding air condensing onto that pipe um, into water droplets and then falling onto your system, which you don't want because um, a wet system is bad. Uh, you get short circuits and it's not fun. So it's mostly just used for uh, overclocking, record, record attempts, that kind of thing. So if you want to make your system uh, run cooler right now, there are a few easy ways to um, to do that. First thing I'd suggest doing is. Um, uh, making the room cooler that it's in. You, with most cooling methods, like I mentioned, you can't get below ambient temperature. So if your room is really hot, your computer is also probably going to be running really hot. Next thing is uh, cable organization. Doesn't um, uh, a lot of cable clutter in your case is going to obstruct airflow. You're not going to you're going to get stagnant air in there, and you're not you know you're not going to have air flowing. Uh, so you're going to get a lot of build up heat in there. That often happens with like ribbon cables from IKE drives and stuff. So try tucking those or maybe getting smaller cables, something like that. Next is to use a thermal paste with a really high uh, uh, transfer rate. So something like Arctic Silver 5 is a good example. Um, if you're using stock um, thermal paste, you might want to consider upgrading to something that has a better thermal transfer rate. Uh, another thing you can do is lap your CPU or your heat sink surface. Basically, you're sanding it with a very, very, very fine grit sandpaper um, in order to, to um, make it very smooth. So the smoother you get, it's gonna, you'll see it visibly get shinier, um, and that means that you have less bumpiness on the surface, and you'll be able to uh, get better contact, which will result in cooler temperatures. And then the last thing is keep your intake and your exhaust as far away from each other as possible. Um, by doing that, you'll make sure that you're not exhausting hot air directly back into the intakes of the system. Um, naturally, if you're doing that, it's not going to be good because you're just going to keep recycling hot air. Alright, so uh, that's basically it, uh, your crash course in computer cooling techniques. If you have any questions, feel free to message me, comment on this video, whatever, uh, or visit ultimatecomputers.net if you need help with your computer. Uh, please suggest any ideas that you have for uh, future TechBits episodes, I'd love to hear them. And uh, until next week, I'm Jeremy Blum. Thanks for watching this episode of TechBits.